All right, everybody, so welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. So today I'm gonna give you my top five baits to use on grass lakes. So um, if you saw, or like you'll see in the footage uh, up ahead, uh, this fish catch right here was specifically based off of spinner baits, okay? So, you know, we threw multiple things at them. Um, but the spinnerbait bite was really, really good. So that's what I stuck to was the spinnerbait bite. And, uh, but either way, that does not neglect the fact that the rest of the baits are not, uh, you know, great options depending on the situation and stuff. So stay tuned to something you don't want to miss. There they go. Yep. Yeah. There's a couple back there. Large my. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Got her? Got him, man. Not a large man. Oh, he come oh, off. Man. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. It was a that was a better fish. Probably two pounds. Got him? Oh, he did it. <laughs> Dude, that was the smallest fish. I think <laughs> it was I'm... a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Good bait, but it could be a little bit more tough. There he is. Little orange mouth. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Watch out. Healthy man. See so, that spinner bait just fell right out, bro. Eat the chad, man. Eat the chad. Chad. Yeah. We got home the trouble, mother. There he is. That's a good one. A large one? Large one. There I go. Right in front of us. Trying to open. There he is. Oh, yeah. Woo. Turn that down, didn't he? Large. I like the 12, I'm man. Hang on, I'm at 18%. It was a white battery. Yeah. That's what I'm using with the white battery. Yeah. Good. Swing him again. Good one for up here. I appreciate it. These jokers right here are actually really healthy, too. Surprisingly, I mean, he's not that big. Yeah. Look at the belly on him. Not like a big one. <laughs> what? There he is. Yeah. Is that good? Good large guys out there. Always trust your, your intuition. Pretty, ain't 
Hang on for you, there you go. All right, everybody. So the first bait we're going to talk about is one that I caught 90% of the fish off of. I say 90, 99% 90, of the fish off of. Um, this is a three eight ounce uh, spinner bait. So uh, we got the Colorado and the Willow. Um, here's the thing. I swapped to a Booyah because they were munching on my uh, War Eagle so good. And this bait has been put through it. And uh, yeah, they broke the wire. So uh, either way, got to get another one of them. But the Booyah, it works just as good um, um, in most cases. Uh, the only thing I did is I took the Big Willow off of the War Eagle and put it on the Booyah, and it gave it a little bit better action. That's where I was triggering most of those strikes at. So, you know, 3-8-ounce spinnerbait is a great option. Uh, I'm going with the White and Chartreuse. I'm typically, that's all I'm going to stick to this time of year, um, simply because of the shad. Um, and then you've got the brim spawn and stuff like that going on. So this is a great option to imitate the brim. This is a good option to imitate the shad and stuff like that, which right now the shad spawn is pretty much over with. Uh, but the, most of the spotted bass are roaming and the large mouth are up in the grass chewing on whatever they can get a hold of. So, you know, your windblown grass, spinnerbait's hard to beat. All right, another option, uh, which is another one of my absolute favorites. So let's just say a slick calm, like y'all saw in my Fluke Spring Hello Summer video. Uh, a fluke. A fluke is extremely hard to beat. Um, you can work it in grass, you can work it in open water, it doesn't really matter. It's a very subtle action type bait. Um, I say subtle. It, you can make it erratic, but it's very subtle in the water as far as it's not just making these crazy wakes and stuff like that or, you know, just making all this noise and stuff. You can just make this bait real erratic and trigger tons of reaction strikes. 99% uh, of the time I'm throwing this up in cover. The other 1% of the time is open water when those um, bass are just chasing uh, but I can't get them to hit you know a walking bait or a popper or anything like that any kind of hard top water bait the fluke is a wonderful wonderful option all right so the third bait I want to talk about this is a swim jig so you know if you're from the south and you have a lot of grass in your lakes and stuff like that everybody knows about a swim jig but uh, this is a technique that's not utilized a whole 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 lot uh, I don't know if people are just not super confident in it, but this is a great option. Your black and blues, your whites, anything like that. I typically throw the black and blue in stained water, so we expected the water to be stained or muddy today just because of all the rain that we got, and it's not. It's clear. So with it being uh, clear, the black and blue is not going to be the best option. Typically, I would throw a white or a green pumpkin, um, but uh, the black and blue, when it gets muddy or anything like that, this is a great option. I take a Yum Christy Crawl and put on it, or either you can do a black... Uh, and blue, you know, swim bait, uh, what fluke, whatever you want to do. But uh, this bait right here is a great option. Throw it up in the grass, pop it as it comes out and stuff. They just eat it up, love it. This is a Strike King Hack Attack Heavy Cover Jig, 3 8 ounce. You can get it in just about anything, get it right back out. All right, now this is another one, um, and it's not necessarily a sneaky type bait, but if y'all remember back in the day, I don't know, this was maybe 10, 15 years ago, Yum come out with a bait that was called the Yum Mighty Bug. It was this goofy looking thing, had like eight legs on it. It's very similar to this. This is the Strike King Rage Bug. Um, I love this bait for flipping, and not only that, I do have a weight pegged on this one, but typically I can work this on top of the water. So typically what I'll do is take that weight off and I'll rig this weightless and reel it across that thin grass. So if you have, you know, thin grass patches that's not just matted up and stuff like that, this right here is a great option, especially if you want to get on top of the water and it's something they don't see a whole lot. Those legs and stuff get to kicking and all that, but this is the Strike King Rage Bug. Um, it's just a great option. I don't think the fish see a whole, whole lot, especially on top of the water. Uh, flipping, they may uh, quite a bit. Not really sure. I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it, but this bait right here is a great option to trigger those crazy reaction strikes that you like to see from them, you know, big bass. So give it a shot. All right, guys, another option is a renowned favorite by pretty much everybody especially if you ever caught a fish off of a frog frog a hollow body frog is a great option it's loads of fun uh there's just a little trick to it you know when they come up and hit it it's hard not to just set the hook right when they hit it you got to give them just a second and then set the hook um but you know other than that seeing those big top water blow ups and just being able to get this bait and i mean you can get it in anything grass lay downs it doesn't really matter it's just a great option uh to get those bass that are tucked up in in cover and stuff like that so um 
This one right here, I think this is the Spro, Spro or a Booyah, I'm not sure. I typically go with the white when, the shad, when they're chasing shad and stuff like that. We got clean, clear water. Uh, brown's really good, black's really good, especially when that water gets a little muddy. Um, but, you know, I, I keep it super simple, white, black, and brown, that's, that's about it. Um, it just kind of imitates everything. If they're gonna get it, they're gonna get it you know, regardless of the color, uh, depending on the water clarity and stuff. But, you know, your hollow body frogs is a great option. All right, guys, so I hope the video helps you. If it does, make sure to like, subscribe for more content. I got you covered when it comes to anything bass fishing. Also, we got members only, so if you'd like to help, uh, you know, it's $2 a month, you get my content early. Uh, so typically, you'll get it a week early, both videos, the Tuesday and Friday videos, and then also you can ask your questions super early. So, you know, get your questions in there before anybody gets there. Also, make video suggestions, you know, for future content and stuff like that, stuff you may want to learn or that you think the community wants to learn. And as always, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. I'll help to the best of my ability. Sometimes it's hard to understand everything in a comment, you know, without being, you know, talking to somebody face to face. But either way, if you have any questions, Always ask, that's how we learn. Either way, guys, I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Oh, great. How'd you do that? I just bent the wire back down. Every time I get a good bait, man, every time something happens to it, I'll just run it like this. <laughs>